Joakim Gomez, wow. welcome to the show! In front of me was Karen Fukuhara, Margot Robbie and Cara Delevingne. Wow. Heaven, man. I always call Singapore Idol my baptism of fire. Gurmit came backstage. I've never seen him angry in You said that? He's been in the media industry for more than half his life. You'll hear his voice when you wake up in the morning and you'll see his face when you turn on the TV on the 9th of August. From TV to radio to live streaming to live shows, this is Joakim Gomez. Wow. Welcome to the show. Hey. You know, for, for somebody who gives <laughs> intros to my guests, having one received yeah. like that, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, I'm no actually problem. very flattered. Yeah, very flattered. Thank She'll you. show you how it's done. Uh, yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah, no, schooling me. <laughs> learning a thing or two, yeah. So I've seen a recent post on your Instagram where you just started this year's National Day preparations yeah. and Sonia is actually your co-host as well this year. So mm. to get the skinny elephant out of the room, how are you and Sonia doing? <laughs> we just gotta get that all the way, you know what I mean? We want to hear because we've spoken to Sonia a few months back, yeah. right? And we've gotten her side of the story on quite a few things. Here so I think we to, go. Yes, here, yeah, we, here go. we go. <laughs> so, so, she, she said you didn't want to talk about this, guys. No, I mean, I'm, just, I mean look, I'm, I'm pretty sure people here want to know my side if they haven't seen it already. So yeah, let, let's go, let's go. Okay, so a quick TLDR that I might give first. The two of you actually, this has been publicized on multiple platforms that you two did go on a date way before your NS even. Oh, goodness. And then what I'm curious about is why didn't you score a second date? Okay, um, <laughs> wow, okay, I know the answer to this question, you're okay? You, 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 okay, you answer I, I, my behalf. I completely hear you. I okay, answer my behalf. Go, I just go, don't go. buy it. Oh, my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. Go, go, say no, it. No, no, you, you, you go ahead, then I'll just tell you again that I don't buy it. Then, let's, guy, then let's move on to the truth. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so my, my real honest answer is it was national service and Subse one, yeah? Subsequently, no, because oh, okay, okay. the day I met her was the day before I enlisted. Okay. So oh. after I met her and I actually sent her back to Tampines MRT, I went to Ikea to buy a chair. I went to the Malay barber to cut my hair, bota, and that's it. Next day, I enlist. Yeah, I remember that, that story and that day exactly. So we kept in contact through SMS. So back then, during camp, cannot bring camera yeah. phone or what. So what, Nokia phone, right? But so, you met her the first weekend you book out. What? Yeah, we saw each other at Butter Factory again. So that was it. I think that was the last time I saw her. And the next I texted her was when she took part in um, 987 Radio Star. Right. Yeah. And now, because you know you're older, you're more mature, I think you have your emotions hopefully. in place, right? hopefully. Yeah. Um, I look back and I went, yeah, I know. I mean, I'm sure there are other reasons why I didn't work out as well. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. So this is the answer you don't buy. Yeah, he doesn't buy it. <laughs> Actually, there's, a, there's something missing. What's after, missing? After the butter fact part, right? Yeah. Then why, why the stopping of contact? The second time I met her, I remember back then, uh, I already went into the club. So I had my chop ready. Okay. Okay, so I think the club was full at a point in time. Uh, <laughs> she and a friend shows up. I was like, hey, you're here. Yeah, hello. Talk, 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 talk. Then she said, oh, uh, have you drunk already? Have you drank? I said, yeah, I have. So I took that as a small hint. I went into butter. I bought two drinks. I came out of the cup. Stop, ah. snuck out, can't give to her. Then she, wow, then she drank. No, my, no guy does this for nothing, you know? Uh, no la. Yeah. Just do it. No one is nice guys. Take it as a hint, right? You don't uh. want to score points, right? But yeah, I think that was about it. And in the end, we just lost contact. And then the no, week no after- No points were scored, la, what you're I saying. guess no. Yeah. So the week after was my field camp. The ultimate <laughs> full circle moment was when we entered the room together at Scape to train as radio DJs. Oh, wow. Yeah, Not in I, the same competition though, right? No, so she won it. And for me was past C9 L9 was after when I tore my ACL again. So I went for surgery and once I got it done, uh, just nice. I think people in the SCF MDC knew who I was through Idol right. and also through Nafa. The full-time host, what up Tiara, she was leaving already. And the other guy called Jordan, who's become a very good friend. So the, the people were like, okay, who can host here? I said, okay, I'll try. I can, I have some experience. So it became That's me insane, yeah. as the resident host for one whole year before new NSFs came in that can host as well. Yeah. So I could go from Monday to Thursday to like a rowdy Tekong show to Friday at the Istana in front of the Prime Minister and President. What is a Tekong show? Oh, Recruits Night. And it, it gets really rowdy. So you must imagine, yeah. To recruit yeah, night. why is Recruits Night? Really? You've been to, You've recruits, been to recruits Night? Recruits Night is... I'm on intake. Oh, so before before you POP, right, if I enter Kong, <laughs> <laughs> uh, SAF MDC goes on and give you like a, camp, a recruits night show. 
which consists of dancing, singing songs, and people will jump up and start partying up and down. It gets really rowdy, and ah. I love it. it it's, it's, it's the best. It's like crowd. a dinner and dance, but recruit. Yeah, but they're all in like admin tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> admin tea, yeah, yeah. you know. Like yeah. Yeah, no, but it was fun. It was fun, and I, I remember. They call it time. <laughs> I remember so clearly one of the my first few recruits. Now I think my first ever recruits night. Right, the first item it was uh, an all girl item. Okay. So when oh, they took nice. the stage, everybody went, whoa! You know, of yeah. course, boys being <laughs> boys, haven't seen girls in a very long time. And, and it was quite sensual, that dance. I think it was Bust Your Windows, the song that they used. And then the next item was an Adam Lambert item where it was all boys. Right. And I felt so bad for all my guy friends in MDC because when they came on stage, I went, boo! Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to look bad, eh? but as a performer on the stage, I can see like, wala, what your buas? Yeah. You know? And, and that's... <laughs> Yeah, and that's <laughs> and that's a lesson in being professional. You know, just do your job, do it well, and get off the stage. Yeah. So speaking of your early traineeship days, mm -hmm. the muttons are actually quite involved in that period of time, and you do yeah. credit some part of your success to them, right? Honestly, yes, because uh, look, when it comes to the muttons, I think when I was on Singapore Idol. I probably rubbed them off the wrong way. Sorry, <laughs> were, were yeah, they sorry. involved? If uh, they were the ones where, I think the day before the live shows, right? You go on 987 to have an interview. Oh, oh I see. So I remember it was Xavier and Sue, and then it became the Muttons. I think as an 18 year old, I was very eager, you know, wanting to be friends with everyone, that, <laughs> that kind of guy, right? So I think maybe I rubbed Vernon off the wrong way. Right. I don't think he liked me. But yeah. Vernon looks hard to please. Yeah, I honest. didn't think he liked me. And <laughs> when Martin started to train me, the first thing I said to Vernon and Justin was, hey guys, you know what? Uh, I'm 24 now. I just want to apologize if I was 18 and you know, rub, everything rub, I used rub to you be. off the wrong way. I think I was a very different person back then. And Vernon just took me by the arm and said, you know, bro, NS changes you. And you know, as you grow, you mature. So yeah, I come work so with you the family. La, there really was something. I, I, I guess so. Maybe. But what was it? Like, what was it that made you realize? Just, oh, yeah, I sure I see that. just being young and foolish. I think every person goes through that phase in their life. You know, where you just like have no filter or you just want to be the coolest guy in the room. You want to make people like you and you you become someone you're not. Right. In that I sense. completely bought into it though. I don't know what I've told you this. Into my idols, my ah. idol stuff. I think- I was a very big fan. Eh? I was rooting for you. I called a few times. Thank you very hey, much. No problem. I was just telling Denise we were sharing just before you came that yeah. you were not vocally the best in of the course, competition. Of course, I wasn't. And, and now I'll, I'll dare say it as well. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't at all. But yeah. then there was something about it that made me want to root for you. Like that underdog effect, right? Mm -hmm. There was like a, the example I give, which is purely made up in my head, right? Yeah. That you would try to sing a big song because you need a big break. And then you might stumble on the big song. Yeah. And then, once again, hypothetically, right? <laughs> the post interview will be like, hey, during training camp, eh, I just tried my best. I knew I needed to wow them, but if cannot, then uh, I've, I've given it my all. And I feel like it made me want to support. I didn't think of it that way, but actually your your opinion is quite close to it. Because uh, the one phrase you said, during training camp, actually, yes, if you speak to the late Iskandar Ismail and Babes Conde, who was the vocal coach back then, right? Okay. On Singapore Idol. Babes, I was named. Yeah, yeah. Babes Conde. She would always tell me in her motherly voice, <laughs> mm. you know, she's like, why you can always do it in the rehearsals, but in the real show, you mess up. She, yeah, was, yeah, she yeah. would scream at me. That's why like you have to disclaim the motherly yeah, voice she, first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, she was like a mom to all of us. And I always speak of her very fondly because she was one of those that really believed like when, when back then shit hit the ceiling in terms of all the comments on your forums, mm. your blogs. To have something like that happen to you at 18, man, you know, it's still a bit immature, yeah. still a bit what, uh, what was impressionable. The I mean, you join a singing competition. Yeah. You haven't made it yet. What? You are trying to show the world no, that hopefully- No, they feel like I other people should have gotten through yeah. instead of you. Yeah. But how hurtful could it have been? Walking down Orchard Road, a random guy throws a bottle at me. Oh. And, uh, and, and that was back then, you know, I always wondered like, would I have survived Singapore Idol if TikTok were yeah, a thing yeah. or mm. even Instagram were a thing back then. Maybe not, you know. But it did resurface because of TikTok, though. I got quite scared and this was two <laughs> years ago in 2022 before my sabbatical. The day before my flight to take a two-month break from work and life, you know. And this video resurfaces by this uh, LC Hamilton 44. That's oh, a username. Oh, oh, I remember. Wow. Okay. Like, I, bro, I Must can remember all these things from my SingPass password. Forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that video, I was like, oh, what's it doing here? Why? Like, it, this, is, this is not something I've been trying to run away from. It's more something mm. like, okay, it doesn't need to see the light of day. I'll talk mm. about it, yes, but 
I want to I want to tell it from my point of view, not someone else had a story for me. Mm. But thankfully, maybe sixty five percent of the comments went, "Okay, this guy grew up. He he found his niche. Now he's a very good host." So I was like, "Oh, thank mm. God!" Yeah. Right. Um, no, what was the clip? The clip itself made you unlikable. Uh, yeah, me me doing geek in the pink. I think it was geek in the pink and Ken Lim giving comments. Yeah, <laughs> at that point. But uh, as in, Ken Lim was fierce. I mean, so it's not that bad, lah. It's just that you probably didn't sing as well as you did, uh, I mean, it's one of those things where you did when you were young, hoping to create an impression. Oh, you tried I'll, too hard on stage. I always call Singapore Idol my baptism of fire. Right. You did also mention before that you actually went on Idol in the first place because being in the media industry had always been your dream. It and was. This was largely in part due to your dad. Gamit, you share a bit Gamit Singh, my dad, and Michael Jackson. These three. So for my dad, growing up as a kid, he used to play at Holiday Inn Park and View. He would play at the lobby lounge. And I'll go as a kid with my mom to watch him sing. Whenever he sees me, he'll sing. Uh, he'll, be, he'll smile. So watching him and many people always go up to him saying, well, Stephen, you know, thank you for the night. It was such a good night. You know, thank you for right. all these songs. And then I watch Michael Jackson. I go, one guy moving an entire stadium, people crying for him and all that. What's this power? And then Gurmit at my National Day Parade preview, 1999, the old National Stadium. When you were primary five. Yeah, primary five. And one years old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, you know. He said the words, to your left, to your right, wave your flags. And I was like, how is this one man doing it? Like, what is this power? Yeah. I want to try one day. Yeah. I remember I was 18 on Singapore Idol. And that year, there was a huge rumor that me and Rahima were dating. Okay. You know, you were told to, oh, you must protect your image. Uh, if, you're, if you're seeing anybody, your value will go down. Like that yeah. kind of thing, you know? So when Rahima got eliminated, um, back then the host, Daniel Ong, I think uh, he was pressured by the producers of the show to go to me uh, and, and and ask me like, uh, because <laughs> Rah Rahima released a video saying that, oh, you know, guys, uh, take care of yourselves. Yeah, and Jokim, come on, la, move on, that kind of thing. So, oh, so, uh, so, so maybe so, she was also so pressured. So I, I, was, I, I was quite sad. I mean, of course, to lose, to lose a person like Rahima, who back then, like, you know, meant a lot to me and mm. also to lose a talented person like her, I, I felt sad. Mm. So of course I was crying. On, on TV. And then Daniel goes to me saying, so Joakim, um, uh, hang on, I put the mic here, okay? <laughs> oh, so, thank you. So Joakim, so uh, uh, what happened? Why did, why, did, why did Rahima say move on? Right. So, uh, me being 18, you know, and uh, being <laughs> stupid, you don't know how to answer that question. I just said, oh, uh, me and Rahima had a bet. Yeah, if, if I lose to her, I must pay 50 bucks. That's why I cry. What a, f what a, <laughs> what, what oh a my dumb God. answer. <laughs> I remember, I remember Gurmit came backstage. I've never seen him angry in my life. <laughs> I've never, he comes to me, $50? You said that? He stares at me. Can you be smarter with your answers? He walks away. Wow. Imagine letting down your hero. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was so scared. I was so sad. I think that affected me more than what I said on national TV. Damn. Yeah. So that, that's the one memory I have of him. And I remember- It like, also meant that he was rooting from you, for you mm, at that point already. Yeah, mm. perhaps. Yeah. I, I guess. I, I hope so. But once the episode ended, um, mm. I went to see Kermit. I, I mean, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I was thinking. Thank you. I'm still quite new to this whole thing. And he goes, you know, I understand, but keep your focus on the competition. That's what you always said. Right. And, I, and, and whenever, whenever- I want to like, say when you shout just now, it really sounded like Gurmit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You might think Gurmit's a comedian and all that. Yes, he is. But have you seen him play serious roles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fella can act. Pretty serious, pretty serious. Serious yeah. acting. That would broken me. Yeah. I, I, I have myself. I think immediately don't show up for the next yeah, round. I, I have myself to blame. It was such a stupid answer. You know? No, but you had, you didn't need to apologize to him, you know? Mm. But it, I felt bad. Like you, you did nothing. If anything, you self sabotaged. Yeah, but he's my hero. I was watching another interview that you did where you talked about your very first press conference that you hosted and yeah. you screwed up. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, NDP. Not, not no, NDP. Press conference. So oh. the very first one is this uh, Girls' Generation press conference back in 2013. That year, I was just fresh off uh, MDC. I was part-timing on 987 on the weekends. Beatrice Chia Richmond gave me the opportunity to try these things. So this was my first ever press conference and it was such a big name, right? Um, the, the one part that I look back on and I went, ah, oh, I wish I did better was introducing them on stage. So the instruction was, when you see the thumbs up, introduce them on stage. So I saw the thumbs up and I said, girls generation. Nobody came on stage. Second time I said it, nobody came on stage. Third time I said it, nobody came on stage. <laughs> to the point where- Oh, well, sorry, how do you get to th like, just like yeah. introducing- So he just pauses, just awkward silence. Yeah, so then you he see, repeat. what oh. I would have done 
if I had the experience <laughs> now was, you know, give more info about girls' generation, banter a little bit. Yeah. But back then as a 25-year-old fresh rookie host, I was like, oh crap, oh shit, what do I do? Yeah. Girls' generation, you know, try again to cover your mistake, right? To the point where I, I from the corner of my eye, back there, I saw one of the uh, staff members of Beatrice Chia's company. Hey. I was like, uh, at, at, that, at that point, I knew I bombed uh, the entire event to the point where uh, to guide the K-pop stars on how to take pictures, right? As the host, you must go like, okay, uh, look here, then to your left, to your right, one more time, and you're done. That was, right. my, that was my job. I totally blanked out and Tiffany took the mic. Okay, let's all look here. <gasps> Tiffany what? herself. So yes, if, if I ever meet her in person, which I really wanted to when she was here in Singapore, I mean, she mm. won't remember, but I'll just thank her. And she might think, who's this crazy guy thanking me for no reason? But yeah. if she gets the backstory, then yeah. Your favorite celebrity interview? <laughs> wow, my favorite celebrity interview. I actually have a few. Um, firstly, Hugh Jackman was my first ever assignment. And it was me and Sonia uh, for, for 987. <laughs> so back then, Justin was our uh, pro assistant program director of the Muttons, 987. And he said, okay, guys, um, since you are the new morning show, and this was 10 years ago, 2014, uh, here's your big assignment. Uh, X-Men days of apocalypse have come into town. So it was him, Peter Dinklage, and Fan Ping Ping. Oh, oh shit, they were in the same movie. So they they Ping Ping up. Up. Yeah, she played Blink. So when we spoke to Hugh Jackman, Sonia was saying like, oh, you know, we're, the, uh, we're a new young team on 987, the youngest radio duo, which was true at the time. And Hugh Jackman immediately, like, um, acclimatized to us in a way where he spoke to us like we are his students, you know? Right. Like the, the wise owl giving the answers and he comment like whenever he, whenever we asked him questions that he's never heard before, he goes, that's a fantastic question. I never heard that one before. You know? Right. And you're like, as an interviewer, you're like, wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the smile and the confidence we left after the interview, wow, I, I won't mm. forget that feeling. Um, my second favorite junket was the Black Panther junket back in 2018. Right. So we flew to Korea to interview oh, wow. the late Chadwick Boseman, yeah. Michael B. Jordan, Ryan Coogler, and Lupita Nyong'o. So I actually dressed up because, I don't know, Black Panther was a movie that made everyone feel proud to, of, of their cultures, right? Yeah. So I wore an Indian costume and I walked in to interview Chadwick. He was like, wow, you got the look on, man. You got the costume on, yeah. the shoes on. I spoke to him. It was a very meaningful five minutes. Lupita Nyong'o, I think, in my career so far, that was the best interview I've ever given anyone. Right. Wow. Like, I, I, whenever I watch the interview, I feel very proud of myself because I went prepared and for her to tell me, an Academy Award winner telling me, wow, you got good questions. I was like, yes. You know? What was one of those good questions? I asked her things about the movie. You know, things I observed. Like, her character drives barefoot in the movie. And I said, so, do you drive barefoot in real life? She said, I do. You know, she, right. she got so excited about it. <laughs> and, and one particular question that really got her was, what was the greatest power to have? And she goes, wow, you got good questions. So she thought about it. Mm -hmm. The interview over and but she said, no, I want to answer this question. Mm -hmm. And she goes, the power to act in spite of your emotions. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like... See. Actually, when, when y'all do this big... Hollywood junkets, right? Mm -hmm. What is the vibe? Uh? Is it like a joking union of 10 minutes, don't ask this, don't ask this, don't ask this, then like just go? There are a lot of rules. Okay, so when I did the Suicide Squad junket with Gerald back in 2016 in New York, in front of me... Your memory just good, ah. Uh? I, I, like, you see, like I, love, I love my job and I love the experience. No, I also like my job. <laughs> but it's like, I have no sure. idea what I did yesterday, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So in front of me was Karen Fukuhara, Margot Robbie and Cara Delevingne. This is wow. heaven, man. <laughs> this is heaven. And I, I had the biggest crush on Margot Robbie. Fair okay, enough. But for that five minutes, you have to forget reality for a while. You have to remember that, hey, I'm a 987 DJ. I represent 987. I cannot fanboy. I cannot yeah. fangirl. Or Singapore for that matter. I want to make sure I ask the best questions so that the views come to my publication. Mm. And if there are views in my publication, I can then further go to other clients saying, hey, look, you know, if we interview these celebrities, we get the views. So use us, not anyone else. You know mm. what I mean? Back then, we were competing with so many other young outlets at that point in their rookie stages, but getting loads of traction here in Singapore. Would you right? overhear what other people are already asking? No, because you go into a, a quiet room. Oh, okay. Imagine this, yeah, this podcast interview, right? Imagine this, the celebrities and the movie minders, they're like a team of seven behind the screen the moment I ask a question that's not allowed, one will jump out saying, cut, done, bye, thank you. <gasps> yeah? Oh. Can you share your worst celebrity interview? Okay, that one actually happened in the studio with 987. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, but only because the industry is very small and Singapore is very small. Not local, by the way. This person had like um, a 
three popular songs that we played on 987 at that time. And this person came to Singapore for like one of those promo tours. Yeah. Comes into our station, gives us the I'm too good for you kind of vibe. Right. You know? During... Right, So right. We're, we're trying to break the ice, Sonia and I, and nothing, mm. you know? But then on air... I love, oh, it. No. I love it here. You I the, see. The moment this person left the studio, I just like, never again. Yeah. Never again, you know. But you still delivered in the end. La. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. But you know, it's one of those things where I hate this phrase, but it was so fake, but we still made it. I can't help but ask this, right? Because mm -hmm. we also asked Sonia, but how has your relationship, you have a very public relationship with her. You've, I mean, you've done content as well that plays on, on, yeah, on yeah, the, yeah. the romantic yeah, side, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How has this affected your personal romantic life? Honestly, there was once where this lovely girl I went out with and she went, actually, how close are you and Sonia? Um, I was like, I think in terms of work, she's the only friend I have and I keep it that way. You know, but please know that there's no, nothing romantic or what. Like, we respect each other. There's a boundary we don't cross. And she goes, oh, okay. But then why do you always portray the image that you are together? I said, we don't. You know, unfortunately, social media being social media, mm -hmm. whatever pictures you post together, all these comments about ship, 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 you know, we, we ship you all. You, you guys are Roman Empire, which we embrace as part of the show. Yeah. Uh, she went, no, I, I don't think I can handle this. I'm sorry. On the flip side, she has a guy best friend. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it difficult though to date given that you are the NDP guy? No lah, I don't think so. But maybe what? it's a plus. No, okay. What I get uncomfortable with is, by the way, I'm a single man, yeah. I think I'm allowed to go out with whoever I want. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I think I'm allowed to respectfully ask out whoever I wish to ask out. Mm -hmm. You know, treat them nicely. Don't harass anyone. Don't force yourself upon anyone whatsoever, right? But... What I get uncomfortable with is sometimes if I go for a dinner, someone recognizes me, but they are the sneaky kind that will do this. So, for example, if um, I'm in front of you, right? Oh, record. Then you take me, uh, take the girl. Then you go on Instagram and say, "Hey, I thought Joakim say he's single?" Question mark. Oh, right. Oh, oh. I'm, only, you. Other people, I thought, I'm only I thought saying you. Know, my friends will send it to me. Oh, oh. You know, Singapore is so small. Yeah, 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 so yeah. this actually happened before, and that girl is my cousin. So expensive. Oh my it was god. So embarrassing. Yeah. No, I don't get it. Why you do your cousin? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you went there. Based on my observation, my personal observations, right? It seems like because of Idol mm -hmm. and it in a sense felt like you had a point to prove, right? And that's why when the 987 opportunity came to you, I'm pretty sure you shared this on an interview that you worked extremely hard because you felt like this was the make it or break it moment already. Yeah. Like the second chance that might never come again. And do you think that has affected a lot of how you view work? and how, why you work so much. Oh, for sure. I mean, in a poker context, whatever I'm doing now, it's my all in. Justin told me this also because when I was part-timing on 987, I was making so many mistakes on my talk sets. I was speaking too fast. I was stammering. There was no structure to my flow. And 2013 was a terrible personal year for me as well uh, for many reasons. And when August of that year happened, 2013, uh, Georgina, our boss back then said, okay, we're going to send you over to Dahlia for training. Dahlia Z, who's this like amazing person who helped me so much. Mm -hmm. From then on, I worked on my talk set presentation, my structures, I got better. And I'm very grateful because Justin said that that was our last resort for you because if you didn't improve after that, we would have let you go. Right. And that was... You know, he, he told you after you. you yeah, he 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 told he told me this just like maybe before the pandemic, sometime around 2019, 2018. And, and I was and and huh? so many years. Uh. Yeah, he he told <laughs> no because after they left 987, we rarely saw each other. Oh, yeah. we, we we often had gatherings at Vernon's place, or we'll meet for lunch like twice a year, twice a year to just catch up. So I remember uh, I came first and Justin came second to the lunch venue. I was just having a chat saying that, well, you know, I, again, I always am very thankful to them. Uh, stop it, y'all lah. Can, can, <laughs> nah, can y'all can y'all grow up? You, if you <laughs> never had a f lunch part, nobody's even. Can y'all grow up? Oh, you know, I know, I know all these. Hey, just now you mentioned about like, learning structures and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Can you share with us like one technical aspect? It's like how you speak to a friend. There's always the beginning, the struct, the the end, the climax, and then you end it with uh, the song or intro whatsoever. So what I was doing- How I speak to a friend yeah, yeah. and I bring it to song. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> that, that's for radio, but what I was doing wrong in 2013 was I was all over the place. I was nervous, you know, even though I had my notebook, I was nervous. I was like stuttering, I was stammering. I was repeating myself once or twice because in my mind, it was like all yeah. over the place. So what Dada did was she sat down, she recorded me and she said, okay, listen to yourself. What do you hear? 
And I went, oh, very nervous, very fast stammers, lots of, uh, you know, repeated words and crutch words and all that. And she goes, okay, how can you correct it? Wow. You know, when she asked me that question, I sat down, I wrote my entire talk set out. I recorded myself at home with her. I'll hear myself and I go, no, I didn't like that. Let's get better. Let's get better. I'll have maybe 15 recordings of the same talk set. And the last one will always be the best sounding one because that was where I identified my mistakes. I, right. I heard myself talk and yeah, it got what better. What is a crutch word? My, a crutch word is the, is the words right. where you fall back on where, for example, I think for this podcast, my words will come. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. And uh, another one I, I would say might be and all that or and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. On the note of you um, not really speaking out much on issues, there is something that you've spoken out about recently yeah. that has gone a bit viral on TikTok, right? And so for some context for our listeners as well, it's essentially you were commentating on the influencer industry in Singapore and how there are people that continue to go to events for free or mm -hmm. to promote things for free, mm -hmm. maybe in terms of like a butter trade or what, and you feel that that actually devalues the influencer industry. Yeah. Can you expand a bit about that? I Where think is this coming from? Yeah. Not just influencers, man. What I fail to see is people future-proofing this industry. I see a lot of the younger influencers, younger online personalities now where, you know, they have great following. They are beautiful. They are handsome. They have very good content. But brands, and this might make me more enemies now, but I don't mind sharing it. They, they know and if you are a 20-something-year-old online personality that has like three viral TikTok videos and you're growing a following, right? Brands will go, hey, let's, you know, send him or her this thing and see what happens. Oh, yeah, hi, you know, we saw your video. We love your work. Can we send you a press kit? You know, yeah, yeah. Just post one story we'll do. Oh, no need to post. But when they say no need to post, you know, <laughs> you know what they yeah, mean, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, no, 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 it's okay. No, just build relationships. But they send you for the first time, sure, you know, accept it. Like if Rolex calls me tomorrow and says, I want to send you a watch, right, please send, send me, you know. <laughs> but if you're going to send me, okay, not Rolex, but you know. Yeah, I, I saw like how that, common, I, I didn't know how it would have yeah, continued. A, a, common, a common brand, you know. Yeah. Four, five different press kits from the same brand, but I know you're paying others to promote that same product. Yeah. So what? I'm your freeloader, is it? I'm, I'm your free influencer, is it? And by the way, to the influencers taking this for free, do know that these things are taxable, yeah? If IRS wants to come for you, they'll come for you. So be extra careful what you're sharing. Mm. So I, I really feel for them and some of them have management companies that don't do shit for them. Yeah. <laughs> they just Sales luck. manage them. Whatever jobs that come in, okay, here's a cut from for us. Here's your cut. Yeah, okay, thank you, go. You know, and I really hope it improves because we do have very good content creators here in Singapore. Like there are some people that call themselves content creators and I believe you. I go, yes, I've seen your content. I love it. There are some who call themselves content creators and I go, no, you are just jumping on the trend. Like I want to quote what Hirzi said on Mothership a few days ago. I think he said, you're more of a trend bandwagon jumper. I forgot the exact phrase that he mm. uses. And some of you, we know, yeah, you're going to Xiao Hong Shu, you're going to Toyin to see what people are doing and you copy that content yeah. and put it and post it yourself. Don't do that. You know, the onus is on us now to really improve ourselves as content creators, as online personalities so that brands will take us seriously. And uh, I really wish there's a guidebook somewhere for how a young one can talk about negotiating contracts to make sure that they understand what the loading period is. They're not mm. exploited. If you're going there with the sole purpose of building relationships to work with them, go for it. You know, if you're a new, if you're a new online personality that you want to build your following, go. Like I encourage you. The first two, three years of a career, go and build. But if you're going, 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 and you're seeing very little returns, maybe change your strat. I mean, that is the game though, I do want to say. At the end of the day, it's you, you could say, if the, you don't pay me, then I don't come. Mm. Like, okay, cool. I don't really care if you don't come. Yeah. Yeah, but there are the few that I do want to make sure they cover and we are going to discuss exact deliverables, mm -hmm. which has nothing to do with this event, perhaps. This event could be the launch of a campaign to come. Yeah. So I will pay them to come here as step one. You know, what you said at the first line kind of caught my attention. If a brand wants to blacklist me because I asked, oh, will there be payment? No, no, not blacklist you. Oh. But just more of your attendance really is a bonus for us. You yeah. Know? So if I'm there to make your brand look good and to hold this and you know, that yeah. kind of thing, and you're, and you're going to use the image, 
but I showed up for free. Yeah. I'm I'm at the losing end as the personality. Correct. You know, and and I don't like that. You know, as much as you want to be organic, right? And I'm sure you, you guys have been through this as well, where they would say, oh, here's a list of do's and don'ts. I can can mm. don't say this, can don't say that. So whenever I send them my drafts and they edit my script, I'm like, wow, okay, how can I, you know, <laughs> still have my sense to it? So yeah, yeah it's the oh, exact same reaction. Yeah, there you go. You see, uh, I'm sure you, I'm sure, okay, this entire past 10 minutes, if you're a content creator or online personality, you might understand what we're going through, even a marketer or PR agency. But if you don't work in this industry, you might catch no ball. But we hope you understand that it's more than just taking pictures, posting videos and looking good. There's a lot that goes behind this industry why that you, you don't Why do see. you think people don't like influencers? Oh, please. There are so <laughs> many that give it a bad name. Mm. There are so many. See, this is where I get a bit... Let's go. Let's speak on. No, no. There are so many that give it a bad name. There are a lot of new ones that just because you got that one viral TikTok video, you behave like you're all that. Guys, it's not the way. Trust me, been there, done that on observing bad behavior. You don't want to offend anyone like that. No one's asking you to be humble all the time and like, oh, thank you, thank you. No, no, no. Be confident, but also, you know, have that sense of being approachable and talking to people. Don't like, oh yeah, hi. Yeah. Don't don't think you're too good for this brand just because you know you got that viral TikTok video or whatsoever. It feels like the influencer starter pack or the online starter pack is uh, must play golf, go Bali, go club. These three things. <laughs> so I'm serious. That's why we haven't make it yet. That's the starter pack now. You no, know? We, we and went to Bali. Yeah, we've been to Bali. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Company trip. Uh, and, and everyone's jumping on the golf band, the golf band wagon to the point where actual <laughs> actual golfers now I have combos in. They go like, yeah, why is our sport getting this? You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and then, uh, okay, if it doesn't go well, if my video's no traction, okay, show some skin. Look, we we know I know what you're doing. I, I know what you're doing for traction. And then when when life gets hard, oh Bali for mental wellness break. You know, everyone mm. goes to Bali for mental wellness. But that, that's a tartar pack now. So how can you be different? But, but why do you must, why do you need to be different? Yeah. So for me on TikTok, look man, when I first started, I was stressed. I remember breaking down and crying. Oh. Like, what do I do on TikTok? Like, why is everyone dancing? Like, oh my yeah. God, all these Xiaomi dancers, how, what do I do? So I remember this was pandemic and I went, hey, you know, I, I like music. Let's <laughs> try doing some music stuff. And when I posted one video where I mixed like a few clubbing songs, right, and it was like amateurly done. I, I, I apologize to all the real DJs out there. I'm so sorry. I played Chaggy Spore Tools. Um, it went viral. Mm. I was like, oh, I remember seeing those. The, 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 the Coldplay songs mm. and, uh, you know, um, Pitbull and all that. And I went, hey, you know, I might be onto something here. So I said, okay, at that point, maybe people needed more music. So I just try. And then when I realized it was going down, ah, shit, okay, it's dying. Like, now I've got to refresh. What do I do? What do I, what do, I do? So I tried different things. You know, TikTok was really about me trying out. Yeah. different things. And now I realize uh, videos of me folding clothes and talking does well. Try that first lah, you know? Yeah. But after four or five <laughs> videos, <laughs> <realization, laughs> so ADHD must content. Have been yeah. to post something that so day. after four or five videos, I get a little bit bored of myself saying, okay, how can I now change a little bit here and there? Mm. It's like keep the same elements that yeah. made the video successful, but how can I present it differently? So The we'll crazy see. thing is that now being bad goes viral also. So you know DJ Mandy, whom yeah. I love all her videos. DJ Mandy, she purposely like, uh, I need to let you hear. So she's an actual <laughs> DJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. by she's the way. She's an actual DJ, yeah. but the, for marketing, right? And people didn't know this at the start. Is she will play the song. Then it's a super abrupt switch. Then yeah, the yeah. TikTok comments are like, oh my God, you're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> and then they super support her. And then she gets invited to like yeah. college parties and all that, right? To yeah. play shit remixes. <laughs> <laughs> but she's an actual DJ. Yeah. So then she like, she's she's good lah. because of that. And then yeah. there's another girl where she's a graphic designer. And then, you know, everyone is teaching like, oh, how I make a McDonald's logo minimalist, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Then yeah, yeah, yeah. this person is like, go use paint to design. Then they mm. go viral and Windows, I think she's the only person that Windows follows on TikTok. Yeah. So right. Just I because she's bad. <laughs> in a way, they've secured their following and content for the next six or seven months because mm. they present themselves as being bad and then the surprise factor kicks in. Yeah. Mm. You know, of them no, being my, my question to you is... <laughs> There you go. Yeah, He's yeah. on to something. Our now. most recent upload, so one of our clips got problem media offline, then upload, right? <laughs> Engagement. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know the crazy part. That thing, then. <laughs> so after yeah. her design thing got boring after a while, right? Now her dog designs. Right. <laughs> she makes her dog, then she gives the dog a voice over. Then everything's got popping, popping, popping. Yeah. Then everybody loves it. What's it to you? This sudden want to help younger content creators or even for the industry to improve itself. Honestly, my, I'm. My question is, what's it to you? Because in the stuff you've described, yeah. it's the same in every profession. There are copiers, 
then they are innovators and majority people, majority of people will be failures yeah. and copying the innovators. I'm sick and tired of people slamming the media industry. I'm ah, sick and tired of that it. That was it. Like, you know, like people always slam, when they say local talent, they automatically always associate with the bad ones. Right. When we actually have fantastic singers, we have, okay, let's not touch the, the ones that we know, you know, Ben King, Sam Willows, Narelle, Riley, mm. Nathan Atono, Inch, Haneri, so, so many who are still active in the scene, yeah? There are so many up and coming singers now who have looked to these guys as the inspiration because look, before Sam Willows, even before Lion City Boy and Sugar Shea, I can only name one local artist. Shake Taufik, Heikel. Taufik oh, okay. Batisa. You know? Mm. And yeah, maybe even Shake Heikel as well. But what, what the local music boom of the 2010s have done is to really open the doors for so many good musicians. And I dare say even for content creators as well. It's opened the doors for so many content creators. There'll be good ones, there'll be bad ones. But when the good ones achieve something or when the good ones have a platform, even the recent Waterbomb Festival as well, mm. the amount of comments that came in saying, oh, please, no local talent. I don't want to see local talent. Don't show Singapore's face. It's really sad. Yeah. Because thankfully, I think the organizers from Waterbomb did their research and they announced very good names. Mm. I think uh, Havens is definitely one to look out for. And again, people say, I are local, cannot make it. And I'm like, no guys, we have very good ones. Just do your research because now it's a battle of whether is it God-given talent or is it fabricated success? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see that. So hopefully I made my point. I think that we're quite curious, like what is it like for you to, because Korean Indian is not a common mix as well, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it like growing up and trying to figure yourself out? Okay, so again, got to to say the entire story. Uh, My mom's Korean. My dad's a mixture of Singaporean, Indian and Portuguese. So my grandparents, my paternal side, they're from this place called Kerala. So if you're Malali, you know what Kerala is. And they... I, I am not. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. If you're Malayali. Oh, oh, so oh, they came to Singapore and, you know, they had a family. So yeah, there was my dad and my dad was a musician. He went to Korea on tour with his band, no? He performed and guess who was at, at, at the at the place he was at? My mom. They mm. met, you know. They said, so hey. you mean she's like mosh pit like that? Like no, that, no, that, no I, don't, I don't think it was a mosh pit. <laughs> la. hey, what kind of songs your father play with? Is uh, it like, you... No, no, no. He saw so songs ah, at the point okay, in time okay. that was trending like the Beatles, okay, okay. you know, Creedence Clearwater Revival. So my music taste... Uh, the good the, times. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Honestly, whenever people hear my music taste, they would think I'm an old person because it's very oldies mixed yeah. with the new songs. Mm. So... Uh, they met, they came to Singapore, they had me. Um, again, when I was younger, I didn't understand it. But now as I'm older, I realize sometimes not all marriages last. Mm. My parents divorced when I was really young. Maybe say I was five. What was confusing and made me angry was like, every time I meet the parent session, uh, only my mom shows up. Then I see other kids got the mom and parents. Right. Then Sorry, like, after your parents separated, yeah. did you, you stayed with your mom? Yeah, my mom. Okay. Yeah, so I was my mom all the way and she really sacrificed her entire life for me. Right. Like Korean, didn't know English, came to Singapore, taught herself English and whatever job that she did is all for me. Right. And, you know, you might say, oh, Jokim, mommy's boy, Jokim, very handpacked. I, it's okay, you know. I have this one lady who gave up her entire life for me. Mm. Yeah, at, at, at 36, sometimes it feels like, oh, yeah, you know, I wish I had my own space. But then I just remember all the hardships she went through. I'm like, nah, I think that's irresponsible of me. Mm. You know, in a way, I'm glad I'm successful now. I take it as if, you know, somebody up there has allowed me to do okay in my career to be able to take care of my mom. Mm. So I, I'm right. very thankful about that. So in terms of being confused, it was more of, why are the kids that both parents are there? And you know, sometimes scrolling, I won't say social media, but when I was in secondary school, it was Friendster. I think we all know what Friendster is. Uh, Friendster, no? Yeah, she do, she very young. Is it, is it like a Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, it was the precursor to Facebook. Okay. Friendster. To MySpace, precursor to What so the heck is MySpace? Yeah. Okay. You can... <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is MySpace? My earliest is the MSN where I can nudge the guy. Yeah, yeah, same okay. Era. Yeah, same era, okay, okay, same era, okay, okay. Same era. Facebook is that era. Like yeah, I got Facebook. Yeah. Oh, okay. So back then it was like 20... <laughs> oh, I mean, sorry, sorry. Friendster is that you are. Friendster, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. 2003, 2004, 2005. Chinese New Year or Christmas, you can post pictures, right? Take it on your very old like, Nokia pictures. Yeah. So I'll see like GGP. pictures of uh, families together and all that. I was like, why? I don't have... Why is this only me and my mom? So I was a very angry kid. Oh. 
Right. I was very angry. And also that mixed with, you know, boys being boys, puberty, your your raging testosterone and all that. And the the playground banter for me in primary school at least was a bit different because aside from making fun of, you know, your mother, your father and nonsense and my skin colour and my race got involved. So I think I got into a lot of fights. This is just a quick summary of it all. Right. The most cliche answer I'll give you is I think if anybody asks me, I'll just say, I identify as being Singaporean because mm-hmm. I feel like I've embraced all cultures. I've, I don't want to sound like minister, but I got friends of different races <laughs> like, and, I, and I know what their cultures are. I know what their beliefs <laughs> are. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know I got a Malay friend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't want to sound like I'm saying that, but I just want you to know that, you know, if we ever needed a poster boy for racial harmony, use me. Like, <laughs> use me because oh, look, he turned like, into a I cannot, laugh. I cannot speak Tamil, but I love to dance with Tamil songs mixed with hip hop. But you can speak three other languages. English, Mandarin, and Korean. Uh. But Fluently, uh, Korean. No, English is... Okay, okay, let's not call it English. Mandarin is broken, but can survive. Korean is, if you throw me there, I can survive because I can read it. But to go beyond like a hi by, uh, can you show me where the restaurant is? Those kind right. of words, right? To go to a heart-to-heart convo. Like, for example, if I to date a girl that can only speak Korean, I'll be in trouble. Right. Yeah. Have you ever brought a date home to show your mom, not date like a girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah. To your mom and then your your mom didn't like her. Yeah, I mean... Is it an end game for you? You know, the thing with moms, I think, okay, I won't say all moms, but majority of the moms and even dads as well, when you show them a partner, they want that partner to be right for you. They, they, they don't want that partner, they, they don't want to have any bad impressions or whatsoever and they want to see whether it's this person the right fit for you and unfortunately and i hate to admit this yeah most of the people that i showed my mom at that point i won't see it but my mom will go not for you you know be careful be careful be like careful. even based off a picture yeah uh, yeah the I, mother's no but, shit you gotta respect that but sometimes it can be a misconception because my mom has gotten it wrong before right. i love you mom but we know this we've gone to this <laughs> many times <laughs> but you're only human mom. yeah we're only human <laughs> but there are most of them where she was quite spot on and i hate to admit that because you know when your mom or dad says cannot you're yeah. gonna be you're gonna rebel a little bit yeah. right yeah so and you uh, like the person enough to even show it to your mom yeah right? and, and i went against uh, her opinions and her advice and true enough i learned the hard way so from the age of five, right? You've never been in contact with your father? Uh, I have, but it was a bit confusing. I mean, if you're a kid, what do you understand about divorce, right? Mm. So I was like, why am I only seeing my dad once a week or, right. or once every two weeks? Eh, my dad remarried. Uh, I, I was confused. Uh, okay. I was very confused and it really got me down. Like there'll be nights where I was very confused. I'm very thankful I didn't self-harm. I think that's a important thing. And also- The fact that you brought it up though, did you almost? There was an attempt to end it all. And I, and I shared this with Coplay themselves actually. There was an attempt to end it all, but thankfully one of their songs came on my iPod. I started to cry and I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I'll be strong and I'll you know, carry on my life. Wow, thankfully that happened. Um, wow, yeah, what know, was the song? God put a smile upon your face. Right. Don't like he also like fixed you a lot. Okay, I love okay. fixing you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a great song. Do you mind sharing what happened? Like how it got to that point? Mm. I was just so angry. I cannot recall specifically the breaking point for me, but it was 2003. It was sometime around October and you know, I was 15. I was at home. I think my mom was doing the night shift and I was just like angry. I was just so angry at something. Crying, angry. I was, I was playing Call of Duty, I remember. So maybe that could have helped with the anger, you know, like losing to the veteran mode. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember like, I just threw my controller and I just went down and I went to the 20th story of another block saying, okay, this is, I'm tired. Why would an idiot bring his iPod with him? I don't know. Yeah. But I, again, I don't know how religious you guys are, even you are as well, but I take it as divine intervention. Mm. Yeah, Many NDPs alive. need hosting. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, in, in a way, I always look back and when I told Chris Martin himself mm. that story, he he said, I don't believe you, but I want to listen to your story. So I told him that he went, he fist bumped me and he, we actually had like a bro convo about depression and sadness and all that right. for that 15 minutes where he was at the after party of his concert here in Singapore. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, so I was quite thankful that I was able to thank someone I feel had a part to play in saving my life. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I wonder what it feels like. Like, is it, I'm sure you are not the only story that they've heard. Mm. Like, what is it like to understand that your music does this for people? That's so crazy. Isn't I it? asked them this with an interview I did with Sonia. Uh, it was a Zoom interview and they just released Higher Power and they actually 
acknowledge it here, you know, we get plenty of these things and we're so happy that our music's able to uplift people. Right. And then Chris mm. Martin, I, I can't really recall the answer, but he said something like, if you're feeling oppressed or depressed or any form of pressed, <laughs> we, we, we hope, you know, our, our, our way, our music helps you. And we're very thankful to the Coldplay fans and the community who has supported us all this, all this mm. while. Mm. Yeah. So, so did you, do you still have a, a relationship with your dad? Yeah, I think it got a lot better once I matured and understood. Actually, yeah, I mean, I realized why it ended. I didn't hate my dad growing up. I, I loved him. I see him once in a while for lunches and dinners. Again, he's such a big inspiration to me and I love my dad very much. I don't hold any ill will towards him. Mm. I think I've become very understanding of it. And yeah, I, I wish him the best. And whenever I see him, I say, please go and run. Your, your belly's getting bigger. <laughs> if, 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 if this is me in 30 years, I'll cry. Dad, come on. No, but my, my dad's, uh, my, my dad and you will get along. Uh, I think you both can, 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 can bend okay, and let's talk together. Yeah. So what is something that you think like a 15 year old who's going through something similar could, could afford to hear? I'm not going to say it's not hard because some people really have it tough. Some people's parents are no longer around parents run away I've heard plenty of different stories but please know you're not alone and that help is always available especially from now till the future I think hotlines are more accessible people are more accessible contact them don't do anything rash with your life okay everybody and it's time for painting of, of the, the day. episode, episode. <laughs> Because they might watch more than one episode in a day. Oh, really, you all planned this. Well done. Yeah, okay. So thank you for joining us in this segment, part of the episode. Yeah. Basically, we are supporting uh, Shaping Hearts, which is a inclusive art festival. You okay. know, when we look for artwork, right, to put in our home, we always want to find something very meaningful. Correct. Shaping Hearts, right, every single art piece that they will exhibit in 19th of October, every single one of them is done by a local artist with disability. Mm. And so this is one of which... So the artist of today is known as Ng Siang Ho and the title of this artwork is Chinatown 3. So I would presume there's one and two. Uh, <laughs> but essentially, okay. this depicts the old shop houses during the 1950s Singapore. Xiong Hoi actually has a hearing impairment, so he likes to share his perspective on things through sight. Right. So through how he okay. sees things, and then he wants to share that with people. And uh, he essentially likes to do a lot of live paintings. Mm. You know, this is drawn by pen. What? I thought watercolor. I mean, also, also. But it's pen. He highlighted, I think he outlined some of the yeah, details. Yeah, you usually and all that. use pen, then after you watercolor in, you okay. watercolor in, then after you use <laughs> pen. Right. Wow. Right. Yep. And so if you would like to check out more <laughs> paintings by local artists with disabilities, you can support Shaping Hearts by visiting like them us. at our Tempanis Hub on the 19th of October this year. See you there. And a big thank you to Joe Kim for joining us today. Like, hey. share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. As I've explained many, many times over, right, I have chronic stage fright and public speaking fright, right? So when I found out the co-host going to be Joe Kim, right, I shat myself. Because like, you know you're going to look, like, you know stand alone, you're not very good already. Then you're going to put, put yourself beside the guy that hosts National Day Parade, right? <laughs> so I was hoping that he just, no, you'll be fine. Huh? But he started like, making fun of me, eh? like, huh? he's just, hey, you're going to start already, don't you need to shoot yourself, that kind of thing. And eh? then I was like, hey, sell out this guy, he's NDP one, eh? why you let him? <laughs> Then I, I just like, our first 30 minutes of our friendship, right, was very was very cordial as I expected the NDP guy to be. I think I insulted him or something like that. I, I think I micro-offended him. You think so? No! Then he suddenly unlocked some shit. Then he started just shitting on me. Then I'm like, dude, you understand I'm talking about chronic stage fright at this moment or not? I finally hear the other I, side of this story. I did not believe a word he said about chronic stage fright because I've seen his content. I've seen the kind of guy that he is on the podcast back then with uh, <laughs> Dew and yeah. Jay Rasif and all that. So I went, this guy, come on, don't be a cockster and tell me you got some chronic stage fright or what. So in the end, it became like the, the so after all, you believe right? me, la, basically. How it works is that we were meeting a bunch of students, yeah. all different shifts, right? Yeah. So we were kind of regurgitating. La. I was regurgitating because... Like, I mean, this Mr. Singapore. So <laughs> at some point, the fourth time, right, I feel like I have mastered the stories that I need to tell. So I'm telling you very confidently, I remember all the punchlines, all that shit, right? Yeah. So when the fourth time, I was solid already. Then he started, he started making fun of my punchline, punchlines in between takes, right? Because he know exactly what I'm going to say. Then on the fifth time, when I finally confidently, I don't dare to say, because I know he's going to make fun of me. <laughs> so, so I try and like reinvent my speech, right? Then I crumble. Then By I the keep... way, the punchline was, and then when I- Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and then when I vomit, the, the vomit green color one eh, that's the punchline. That's what Get I'm going to say. Every time. <laughs> I don't even remember what the story is about. Dude. Oh no, we can't say it. We can't say it. We can't say it. Yeah, we can't. We can't.